Hello and welcome to What's in the Night Sky for week beginning the 27th of July. I'm Hayley and this week I'm going to be talking about Comet Neowise, the Kepler and Copernicus craters on the moon and our constellation of the week which is Aquarius the water bearer. Let's start by having a quick look at where Comet Neowise is this week. So I'm going to move around to the northwest. So here we are on Monday the 27th around half past 10 and if you find the familiar shape of the Big Dipper and look directly below the, the handle or the tail of the Big Dipper and you might be able to locate Comet Neowise. Now it, the comet has been dimming and by this point you're unlikely to be able to pick it out with your naked eye. You may still be lucky enough to pick it out with a pair of binoculars or a small telescope. Um, if you haven't had a chance to see it already then this could well be your last chance to do so before it gets too dim. Um, and if we have a look at the position as we go through the week you can see that it is moving westwards as the week goes on. Let's move on and take a look at the moon now. So if we go back to the beginning of the week, the 27th, and let's take a look at the phase of the moon. You can see the moon is at first quarter on the 27th and that it is waxing towards almost full um, by the end of the week on Sunday. You actually have a full moon on Monday, the following Monday. This week, why not have a go at spotting a couple of the bright ray craters on the moon? Um, so we have two over here. So towards the end of the week, when you're getting near full, um, have a look for this crater which is Copernicus and this one which is Kepler and both of those craters have a system of rays which is um, material that was thrown out of the craters on the original impacts and um, they can look quite spectacular if you have a pair of binoculars you should be easily able to pick out both of those ray systems um, look at, taking a look at the craters Kepler is 20 miles across and is named after Johann Kepler who famously came up with the three laws of planetary motion in the early 1600s and this one Copernicus named after Nicholas Copernicus who in the 1500s suggested that planets orbit the Sun rather than orbit the Earth which at the time was a very radical idea and most people believed that the Earth was the center of the universe and everything else orbited around it um, and there are a number of problems with an Earth-centred or geocentric model. Um, one of them is that some planets occasionally appear to move backwards in the sky, which is called retrograde motion. Um, and that was not able to be explained well by a geocentric model. Um, Copernicus was able to use his sun-centred or heliocentric model to explain that retrograde motion was actually caused by Earth moving through space. So to explain what I mean by retrograde motion, it can be helpful to take a look at the planet Mars. So if we just move towards the east, we can see Mars. And Mars is well placed for observing at the moment. So if you want to take a peek at planet Mars, um, have a look for its orange glow and if you have a small telescope then you should be able to make out its orangey disc and maybe some light and dark features on the surface. If I zoom out and we take a look at the motion of Mars across the night sky over time, so I'm just going to change a few settings down here so that I can illustrate that. So the planets move with respect to the background stars over time. If I speed up, keep an eye on the date down here and you'll see how we're moving through time. So you can see that Mars is moving across the night sky now. And I'm going to zoom up a bit more. 
and there we go you can see that it just began to move backwards so it was moving this way and then it suddenly changed direction and if I start it up again so you can see it's now moving backwards and we call that retrograde motion and then it changes direction again and starts to move in the direction it was moving in originally so that retrograde motion of Mars was very difficult to explain using a geocentric or earth centric model of the solar system and it is easy to explain if you have a heliocentric model of the solar system where the earth is also orbiting the sun okay so let's go back to July the 27th and take a look at the other planets that are visible at the moment okay so we have Jupiter and Saturn in the south as they have been for some time now and on Saturday the 1st of August you can spot Jupiter very close to the almost full moon um, so if we go to the first and here we go so Jupiter appears just um, around one and a half degrees away from the moon on Saturday night um, which should make those this pairing quite nice in binoculars if we take a look at a binocular view um, here we go so you can see Jupiter and the moon in the same field of view of a pair of binoculars. Let's finish by taking a look at our constellation of the week for this week which is Aquarius, the cup bearer or water bearer and the best way to spot it is to have a look in the south after midnight and find the bright orangey glow of Mars and the bright planet Saturn as well and Aquarius will be in between the two. Um, to spot Aquarius it doesn't have any particularly bright stars so you are going to need to be in a nice dark location free from too much light pollution. Um, another um, in, uh, good pointer towards Aquarius as well is this star um, Formal Hout, which is in the constellation of the Southern Fish, and it is sometimes referred to as the loneliest star in the night sky because it's the only bright star in this region of sky. And it will need to be quite late for you to pick that out because um, you can see that it doesn't rise above the horizon until after 1 a.m. So Aquarius, if we put the art on, you can see is depicted as a cupbearer and in Greek mythology Aquarius is associated with the deluge that wiped out almost all of humanity. Zeus, the king of the gods, unleashed the flood to punish people for their misdeeds in a story that parallels the story of the great flood in the Old Testament. In ancient Egypt, the constellation of Aquarius represented the god of the Nile River and this god distributed the waters of life and the urn symbolised the fount of good fortune. Um, and Aquarius is located in a region of sky that is sometimes known as the Celestial Sea because of the other water uh, constellations that we find there. And I already mentioned the southern fish um, we've also got Pisces over here, the northern fish, and Cetus, the whale as well. Uh, if you are looking for Aquarius this week, then you may also be able to spot a few uh, meteors. Uh, there is a minor meteor shower um, called the Southern Delta Aquarids, which um, peaks on the 30th. Um, so if you have a look, uh, so the radiant of the meteor shower, I should say, is in the constellation of Aquarius. So that's where the meteors appear to originate from. Um, so if you look a little bit away 
from the constellation that should give you the best chance of seeing meteors with a nice long trail. Um, and its peak rate of meteors um, is thought to be about 18 or so per hour. Um, so if you're out for a while, you might be able to spot a few meteors in this part of the sky. And that brings me to the end of our night sky tour for this week. I'm wishing you clear skies wherever you happen to be.